Thanks for being with us. On every episode of Citizen University TV, we're going to explore different dimensions of citizen power. What does it mean to bring people together, to make change, to have voice? When we do this show, it's not only going to be me talking and explaining some different concepts, we're also going to hear from people just like you, from around our city and around the country, who are doing this kind of change-making and concerted action. But first, I'd like to actually define some terms. When I say citizen, what I mean isn't only people who are United States citizens under our immigration laws and documentation status. I mean people who are members of the community, pro-social contributors to the community. That's the broad sense in which we say citizen. The other term that I want to define is this, power. And when I say power, I mean simply the ability to ensure that others do what you want them to do. Now, I grant that can sound a little bit menacing, a little impolite to say it so bluntly, but if you feel a little bit funny about that definition, I invite you to get comfortable with it because it's important to be able to be real about what power is, not only for the purposes of this show, but really for the purposes of trying to make real change in our community. What I'd like to do now is describe six different forms of citizen power, ways in which together we do make change and make our voices heard. Well, the first of these forms of power is very basic, physical force, control over the means of violence. Whether that control resides in a police force or in an army or a militia or some other organized group, physical force is civic power at its most elemental and primal. The second form of citizen power that matters is wealth, money. Money buys results. Money buys almost any other kind of power. And in this age of inequality that we're living in right now, everybody's realizing in more sharp and heightened ways how wealth and inequities of wealth translate into inequities of voice and access to our own democracy. So wealth is crucial. A third form of citizen power, though, that's just as crucial is state action, by which I mean government. The use of government and bureaucracy and public policy and rulemaking to compel people to do certain things or not do certain things, to define what you can and cannot do in community. State action, in a democracy in particular, is the way that we express collectively how we want to decide to set priorities about behavior, about spending, about our lives together. Well, the fourth form of citizen power social norms is another way of getting at the same question. But it doesn't have to be, when you come to social norms, something about the hard, centralized machinery of government. Take an issue like gay marriage or guns. On these issues, social norms, what people believe is okay, what people think is permissible, what people think is normal as a way of behaving and a way of thinking, they can have as much force and influence as state action, even though they're softer and more decentralized. Social norms matter, and they are contagious in ways that other forms of power are not. Well, the same can be said of the fifth form of citizen power, and that's ideas. An idea, maybe it's individual liberty or racial equality, an idea can activate and captivate the imaginations and the beliefs and the attitudes of lots of people. Ideas can move people to organize. Ideas can move people to change the way they see and change the way they behave. And unlike other forms of citizen power, ideas can't be controlled by any one person or any one group. Ideas flow freely. And this form of citizen power is really important for us to explore. The sixth, though, form of citizen power is fundamental. Numbers. Lots and lots of people. When you have lots of people, particularly in a democracy, who are willing to organize, who are willing to protest, who are willing to come to a city council hearing, who are willing to vote, who are willing to tell their neighbors about other issues, numbers matter. Those people make a difference. Those people have force and power in a way that is unique and exceptional in democratic life. So these forms of citizen power that we're talking about here. Physical force, wealth, state action, social norms, ideas, and numbers come into play in every form of our lives together, 
If you just look around, look at the newspaper, look at the headlines, or take a walk through your own neighborhood in the ways that it's changing, think about what's happening in the country right now, you'll see all of these different forms of citizen power at play, being activated in one form or another by different people, and you'll see the ways in which they interact with one another. And part of what we're trying to do in this show, and trying to do in general in our work at Citizen University, is to give people more sight, enable them to perceive the ways in which these six forms of citizen power are activated, and the ways in which they interact with one another. Well, what we're going to do today, and we'll be doing this every episode that we have of Citizen University TV, is we're going to take ideas like this and make them concrete in a case study.